Praise the Lord. According to one year Bible reading plan day 123, we have 2 Chronicles chapter 33 to 36. 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king of Judah and he ruled in Jerusalem for 55 years, following the disgusting practices of the nations whom the Lord had driven out of the land as his people advanced. Manasseh sinned against the Lord. He rebuilt the pagan places of worship that his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He built altars for the worship of Baal, made images of God's Asherah, and worshipped the stars. He built pagan places in the temple, the place that the Lord had said was where he should be worshipped forever. In the two courtyards of the temple, he built altars for the worship of the stars. He sacrificed his sons in Hinnom Valley as burnt offerings. He practiced divination and magic and consulted fortune tellers and mediums. He sinned greatly against the Lord and stirred up his anger. He placed an image in the temple, the place about which God had said to David and his son Solomon, Here in Jerusalem in this temple is the place that I have chosen out of all the territory of the twelve tribes of Israel as the place where I am to be worshipped. And if the people of Israel will obey me all my commands and keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them, then I will not allow them to be driven out of the land that I gave to their ancestors. Manasseh led the people of Judah to commit even greater sins than those committed by the nations whom the Lord had driven out of the land as his people advanced. Although the Lord warned Manasseh and his people, they refused to listen. So the Lord led the commanders of Assyrian army invade Judah. They captured Manasseh, stuck hooks in him, put him in chains and took him to Babylon. In his sufferings, he became humble, turned to the Lord his God and begged him for help. God accepted Manasseh's prayer and answered it by letting him go back to Jerusalem and ruled again. This convinced Manasseh that the Lord was God. After this, Manasseh increased the height of the outer wall on the east side of David's city, from a point in the valley near Gihon, spring north to the fish gate, and the area of the city called Aphel. He also stationed an army officer in command of the unit of troops in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He removed from the temple the foreign gods and the image that he had placed there, and the pagan altars that were on the hill where the temple stood, and in the other places in Jerusalem, he took all these things outside the city and threw them away. He also repaid the altar where the Lord was worshipped, and he sacrificed fellowship offerings and thanksgiving offerings on it. He commanded all the people of Judah to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Although the people continued to offer sacrifices at other places of worship, they offered them only to the Lord. Everything else that Manasseh did, the prayer he made to his God, and the messages of the prophets who spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are all recorded in the history of the kings of Israel. The king's prayer and God's answer to it, and an account of the sins he committed before he repented, the evil he did, the pagan places of worship, and the symbols of the goddess Asherah that he had made, and the idols that he worshipped, all are recorded in the history of the prophets. Manasseh died and was buried at the palace, and his son Ammon succeeded him as king. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king of Judah, and he ruled in Jerusalem for two years. Like his father Manasseh, he sinned against the Lord, and he worshipped the idols that his father had worshipped. But unlike his father, he did not become humble and turned to the Lord. He was even more sinful than his father had been. Ammon's officials plotted against him and assassinated him in the palace. The people of Judah killed Ammon's assassinates and made his son Josiah king. Second Chronicles chapter 34 Josiah was eight years old when he became king of Judah and he ruled in Jerusalem for 31 years. He did what was pleasing to the Lord. He followed the example of his ancestor King David, strictly obeying all the laws of God. In the eighth year that Josiah was king, while he was still very young, he began to worship the God of his ancestor King David. Four years later, he began to destroy the pagan places of worship, the symbols of goddess Asherah, and all the other idols. Under his direction, the altars where Baal was worshipped were smashed, and the incense altars near them were torn down. They ground to dust the images of Asherah and all the other idols and then scattered the dust on the graves of the people who sacrificed to them. 
He burned the bones of the pagan priests on the altars where they had worshipped. By doing all this, he made Judah and Jerusalem ritually clean again. He did the same thing in the cities and the devastated areas of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, and as far as Naphtali. Throughout the territory of the northern kingdom, he smashed the altars and the symbols of Asherah, ground the idols to dust, and broke into bits all the incense altars. Then he returned to Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of his reign, after he had purified the land and the temple by ending pagan worship, King Josiah sent three men to repair the temple of the Lord God, Shaphan, son of Azaliah, Messiah, the governor of Jerusalem, and Joah, son of Joahaz, a high official. The money that the Levite gods had collected in the temple was turned over to Helkiah, the high priest. It has been collected from the people of Ephraim and Amnasi and the rest of the northern kingdom, and from the people of Judah, Benjamin, and Jerusalem. This money then handed over to the three men in charge of the temple repairs, and they gave it to the carpenters and the builders to buy the stones and the timber used to repair the buildings that the kings of Judah had allowed to decay. The men who did the work were thoroughly honest. They were supervised by four Levites, Jahath and Obadiah of the clan of Merari, and Zechariah and Meshulam of the clan of Kohath. The Levites were all skillful musicians. Other Levites were in charge of the transporting of material and supervising the workers on various jobs, and other records or served as guards. While the money was being taken out of the storeroom, Hilkiah found the book of the law of God, the law that God had given to Moses. He said to Shaphan, I have found the book of the law here in the temple. He gave Shaphan the book and Shaphan took it to the king. He reported, We have done everything that you commanded. We have taken the money that was kept in the temple and handed it over to the workers and their supervisors. Then he added, I have here a book that Hilkiah gave me. And he read it aloud to the king. And the king heard the book being read. He tore his clothes in dismay and gave the following order to Hilkiah, to Ahikam, son of Shaphan, to Abdon, son of Micaiah, to Saphan, the court secretary, and to Isaiah, the king's attendants. Go and consult the Lord for me, for the people who still remain in Israel and Judah. Find out about the teachings of this book. The Lord is angry with us because our ancestors have not obeyed the word of the Lord and have not done what this book says must be done. At the king's command, Hilkiah and the others went to consult a woman named Huldua, a prophet who lived in the newer part of Jerusalem. Her husband Shalom, the son of Tikwa and grandson of her Haz, was in charge of the temple robes. They described to her what had happened, and she told them to go back to the king and give him the following message from the Lord. I am going to punish Jerusalem and all its people with the curses written in the book that was read to the king. They have rejected me and have offered sacrifices to other gods, and still have stirred up my anger by all they have done. My anger is aroused against Jerusalem, and it will not die down. As for the king himself, this is what I, the Lord of God Israel, say. You listen to what is written in the book, and you repented and humbled yourself before me, tearing your clothes and weeping, when you heard how I threatened to punish Jerusalem and its people. I have heard your prayer, and the punishment which I am going to bring on Jerusalem will not come until after your death. I will let you die in peace. The men returned to King Josiah with this message. King Josiah summoned all the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, and together they went to the temple, accompanied by the priests and the Levites, and all the rest of the people, rich and poor alike. Before them all the king read aloud the whole book of the covenant which had been found in the temple. He stood by the royal column and made a covenant with the Lord to obey him, to keep his laws and commands with all his heart and soul, and to put into practice the demands attached to the covenant, as written in the book. He made the people of Benjamin and everyone else present in Jerusalem promise to keep the covenant. And so the people of Jerusalem obeyed the requirements of the covenant they had made with the God of their ancestors. King Josiah destroyed all the disgusting idols that were in the territory belonging to the people of Israel, and as long as he lived, he required the people to serve the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Second Chronicles chapter 35 King Josiah celebrated the Passover at Jerusalem in honor of the Lord. 
On the fourteenth day of the first month, they killed the animals for the festival. He assigned to the priests the duties they were to perform in the temple and encouraged them to do them well. He also gave these instructions to the Levites, the teachers of Israel, who were dedicated to the Lord. Put the sacred covenant box in the temple that King Solomon, the son of David, built. You are no longer to carry it from place to place, but you are to serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Take your places in the temple by clans according to the responsibilities assigned to you by King David and his son King Solomon, and arrange yourselves so that some of you will be available to help each family of the people of Israel. You are to kill the Passover lambs and goats. Now make yourselves ritually clean and prepare the sacrifices in order that your fellow Israelites may follow the instructions which the Lord gave through Moses. For the use of the people of the Passover, King Josiah contributed from his own herds and flocks 30,000 sheep, lambs and young goats, and 3,000 bulls. His officials also made contributions for the people, the priests and the Levites to use. And the officials in charge of the temple, Hilkiah the high priest, Zechariah and Jehiel, gave the priests 2,600 lambs and young goats and 300 bulls for sacrifice during the festival. The leaders of the Levites, Kaniah, Shemaiah, and his brother Nathaniel, Hashabiah, Jael, and Josabath, contributed 5,000 lambs and young goats and 500 bulls for the Levites to offer as sacrifices. When everything was arranged for the Passover, the priests and the Levites took their posts and commanded by the king. After the lambs and the goats have been killed, the Levites skinned them and the priests sprinkled the blood on the altar. Then they divided among the people by family groups the animals for burnt offerings so that they could offer them according to the instructions in the law of Moses. The Levites roasted the Passover sacrifices over the fire according to the regulations and boiled the sacred offerings in pots, kettles and pans and quickly distributed the meat of the people. After this was done, the Levites provided meat for themselves and for the priests descended from Aaron. For the priests were kept busy until nine, burning the animals that were burned whole and the fat of the sacrifices. The following musicians of the Levites' clan of Asaph were in the places assigned to them by King David's instructions. Asaph, Haman, and Jerathan, the king's prophet, the guards at the temple gates did not need to leave their post because the other Levites prepared the Passover for them. So as King Josiah had commanded, everything was done that day for the worship of the Lord, the keeping of the Passover festival, and the offering of burnt offerings on the altar. For seven days, all the people of Israel who were present celebrated the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. Since the days of the prophet Samuel, the Passover had never been celebrated like this. None of the former kings had ever celebrated a Passover like this one, celebrated by King Josiah, the priests and the Levites and the people of Judah, Israel and Jerusalem in the 18th year of Josiah's reign. After King Josiah had done all this for the temple, King Necho of Egypt led an army to fight at Karshemish at the, on the Euphrates River. Josiah tried to stop him, but Necho sent Josiah this message. This war I am fighting does not concern you, King of Judah. I have not come to fight you, but to fight my enemies, and God has told me to hurry. God is on my side, so don't oppose me or he will destroy you. But Josiah was determined to fight. He refused to listen to what God was saying through King Necho, and so he disguised himself and went into battle on the plain of Megiddo. During the battle, King Josiah was struck by Egyptian arrows. He ordered his servants, Take me away, I am badly hurt. They lifted him out of his chariot, placed him in a second chariot which he had there, and took him to the Jerusalem. There he died and was buried in the royal tombs. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem mourned for his death. The prophet Jeremiah composed a lament for King Josiah. It has become a custom in Israel for the singers, both men and women, to use the song when they mourn for him. The song is found to, in the collection of laments. Everything that Josiah did, his devotion to the Lord, his obedience to the law, and his history from beginning to the end is all recorded in the history of kings of Israel and Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 26 The people of Judah chose Josiah's son Jehoaz and anointed him king of Jerusalem. 
Jehoaz was 23 years old when he became king of Judah and he ruled in Jerusalem for three months. King Necho of Egypt took him prisoner and made Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. Necho made Jehoaz's brother Eliakim king of Judah and changed his name to Jehoiakim. Jehoaz was taken to Egypt by Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king of Judah, and he ruled in Jerusalem for 11 years. He sinned against the Lord his God. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia invaded Judah, captured Jehoiakim, and took him to Babylonia in chains. Nebuchadnezzar carried off some of the treasures of the temple and put them in his palace in Babylon. Everything that Jehoiakim did, including his disgusting practices and the evil he committed, is recorded in the history of kings of Israel and Judah. His son Jehoiachin succeeded him as king. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king of Judah, and he ruled in Jerusalem for three months and ten days. He too sinned against the Lord. When spring came, King Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin to Babylonia as a prisoner and carried off the treasures of the temple. Then Nebuchadnezzar made Jehoiachin's uncle Zedekiah king of Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king of Judah, and he ruled in Jerusalem for 11 years. He sinned against the Lord and did not listen humbly to the prophet Jeremiah, who spoke the word of the Lord. Zedekiah rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had forced him to swear in God's name that he would be loyal. He stubbornly refused to repent and return to the Lord, the God of Israel. In addition, the leaders of Judah, the priests, and the people followed the sinful example of the nations around them in worshipping idols, and so they defiled the temple, which the Lord himself had made holy. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, had continued to send prophets to warn his people, because he wanted to spare them and the temple. But they made fun of God's messengers, ignoring his words and laughing at his prophets until at last the Lord's anger against his people was so great that there was no escape. So the Lord brought the king of Babylonia to attack them. The king killed all the young men of Judah, even in the temple. He had no mercy on anyone, young or old, man or woman, sick or healthy. God handed them all over to him. The king of Babylonia looted the temple, the temple treasury, and the wealth of the king and his officials, and took everything back to Babylon. He burned down the temple and the city, and all its palaces and its wealth, and broke down the city wall. He took all the survivors of Babylonia, where they served him and his descendants as slaves until the rise of the Persian Empire. And so, what the Lord had foretold through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. The land will lie desolate for seventy years to make up for the Sabbath rest that has not been observed. In the first year that Cyrus of Persia was emperor, the Lord made what he had said through the prophet Jeremiah come true. He prompted Cyrus to issue the following command and send it out in writing to be read aloud everywhere in his empire. This is the command of Cyrus, emperor of Persia. The Lord, the God of heaven, has made me ruler over the whole world and has given me the responsibility of building a temple for him in Jerusalem, in Judah. Now all of you who are God's people, go there and may the Lord your God be with you. May the Lord bless us abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.